Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm Taylor Combalusier, a mining analyst at Red Cloud Securities, Inc. Today's webinar focuses on Heritage Mining, which is a brand new private precious and base metal explorer focused on its Black Lake Drayton project in northwestern Ontario. The project comprises over 14,000 hectares and has excellent access to infrastructure. A brokered IPO is anticipated in Q2 this year uh, for the company as well. Uh, today, I have with me on the webinar Peter Schlub, the president, CEO, and director, as well as Mitch Lavery, who's the principal geologist at Heritage Mining. Today's webinar will be comprised of two parts. In the first part, uh, Peter and Mitch will provide an introduction to Heritage Mining, and then in the second part of the webinar, we'll take your questions live. So please submit any questions that you have using the chat box, and we'll get to as many as we can. To start, we'll handle the disclosures and then get into the presentation. So for heritage mining, there may be some forward-looking statements made on this call. I would direct listeners to the cautionary note on page two of the heritage mining presentation located on the company's website. For Red Cloud Securities, Inc., I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy and sell securities. And we note that this call does not take into account the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigations and seek their own professional advice for investing. Please see our most recent research located on our website for heritage money specific disclosure. With that out of the way, I'll turn it over to Peter and Mitch to introduce you uh, to heritage mining and what you have to look forward to with the company. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Taylor, it's great, great to be here. I see on the on the invite list of uh, attendees, we have some current shareholders as well. And, and uh, so it's great to kind of be here and introduce everybody to the story that we've been working so hard um, over the past uh, few years to build up. And now it's kind of, um, you know, taking the next step. So I'll, I'll just jump right into it. Um, legal, legal disclaimer as pointed out, um, so basically, what we what we what we have is a our flagship project in uh, northwestern Ontario. We have uh, identified four mineralized zones, um, each showing uh, above million ounce deposit potential. Um, kind of just to hit it up front. So our pre money valuation is right now four point five million. We have a great land package. Uh, fantastic team, capital structure is tied at 18 million, and we have a decent amount of cash uh, for a private company at around a million, 1.2 million. Um, environmentally and socially conscious, 90% of our uh, current target targeted areas are accessible through. Um, you know, there's a highway through the property. There's a, a railway. There is um, uh, established all all weather logging roads and ATV trails. So very easy to get to. We've been up there at, at length um, to uh, 17 of the 21 uh, showings. So, you know, did a, did a very deep dive on the due diligence site visit. Um, overall, it's, you know, 14,000 hectares, um, no, notable um, historic bulk sample, 8,000 tons with 14 grams, and then another 4,000 4, 4, tons at, um, or sorry, four tons at 18 grams. So, you know, there's, there's some very interesting um, prospects there that we look to advance. Um, and then our, our kind of uh, secondary focus is contact base. So that was um, kind of an aggregated or a consolidation play below uh, Kinross and that's 4,700 hectares, but we'll, we'll focus on the flagship project um, for the purposes of this presentation as it, it is our, uh, our flagship project. Um, we have a, a great team, uh, notably with um, a proven track record with similar deposits, Trelawney, Bell Creek and the uh, Juby Gold Mine. Um, we can, we'll talk more about that later and, uh, you know, significant transactional experience at exceeding 15 uh, billion, which is, which is great. Oh, next. Okay. Okay. So this slide is kind of an overview shows us, you know, we're, we're in, we're in elephant territory. Um, the project is situated on the Wabagoon sub province, um, of the superior province in Northwestern Ontario, um, along the Abrams Minnetaki. Lake Greenstone Belt, um, as you can see, you know, north of 10 million ounces. So notable deposits along this um, are, you know, Rainy River, Cameron, and the Goliath Complex. And what we'll do is basically how we're going to, you know, go about this is, is this is the big overview, and then we're going to jump in to our kind of adjacent property, 
to us is Treasury Metals, who has done a great job advancing their project. And then we'll go into the different sections um, that we're going to be focusing on. So, um, you know, this kind of gives the, the overview. And then a not another notable point on the uh, on this map is, you know, relative to other projects in the area, you know, we have, again, we're, we're very close to infrastructure. There is a paved highway through the property, all, all, all weather logging roads and well-maintained ATV trails. So it's, it's, it's quite a bit different than other projects in, um, in Northwestern Ontario. You know, there's no ice roads. We don't have to fly in to do work. So it's inexpensive and efficient um, to get around. Specifically, if you kind of zoom in here, I don't know how big it is on, on your screen, but you know, we're 25 minutes from Sioux Lookout, which is where we stayed for our for our due diligence site visit, and about an hour from Dryden, Ontario, both with you know access to skilled labor and infrastructure. So we're in a great area, and um, we're we're currently kind of advancing the project as as we speak, which is um, which is exciting. Um, overall, this is kind of more of a detailed overview made made for the website, um, but you know it, we kind of go through. There's you know we have 14,000 hectare package. Um, notable points here, there's 176 holes that we've currently um, drilled out, or sorry, that have been cu currently or previously um, drilled. And then what we're doing right now is when we kind of saw this project is, you know, you get this database and there's two, there was two separate um, Excel file databases. And then you have like all this other kind of historic scanned in PDF documents. And you kind of sit there and you're looking through and doing your due diligence. Like, wow, there's just a ton of data here um, that's never been aggregated. There's been a ton of um, portions of this property that have been, you know, looked at, but never in a systematic way, never in a low grade high tonnage perspective, um, which is kind of what we're seeing. We're seeing indications of, you know, Archean orogenic low gold VMS and magmatic based metal mineralized systems. So basically kind of an overview of the region and, um, you know, this is established uh, historic mine jurisdiction. So, you know, very excited. But again, this is more of a, of a website. Um, website reference. Uh, this slide, uh, it kind of, it, it's busy, but it shows how many people or how many companies have really advanced this property. Um, and, it, you know, it's, there's, there's little pieces of each of each of these, you know, little, little, little pockets. And then what, what's happened is no one's ever looked at it on a consolidated basis. So what we've done is looked at all we, we've done and what we're currently doing, because we recently just acquired the Zarn Lake acquisition, which is a, a small portion um, within the properties. Now we have one consolidated package, but there is a ton of data here that has never been systematically looked at from a low grade, high tonnage perspective. So this kind of shows you who's been there. Um, we're putting it all together and we're the first first group in about, you know, almost 100 years that has had this land package consolidated and moving it forward. So. Um, great to be here. Um, okay, so this kind of, uh, then we zoom in. So the Drayton Black Lake project um, is adjacent to the Treasury Metals um, Goliath complex. So as you can see here, they've kind of, you know, we, we are on trend, which is fantastic. And this kind of reflects on the advancement of, of their projects as well. So the Goliath project is kind of where they're, they've done a majority of their work. And then the Goldland project, they're, they're drilling out as well. And then the Miller kind of uh, not so much, but as you can see, there's an, you know, a trend going up and we're right on trend. And what we've done is we've identified four zones indicated here, um, the Moretti split lake and shaft zone that, you know, we're going to go after and systematically ad advance. Um, and we think that there's early signs, um, you know, in each of these that kind of host the potential for a, for a, from an over a million ounce deposit. So now we're kind of jumping in um, into the various zones. So this is an interesting graphic. Again, this is like public information that we've compiled. And while we were on, um, you know, on the site visit, we've kind of developed that there's, you know, uh, four areas here. So the Moretti is our priority with, you know, notable 10 to 30 meter wide structural zones. Uh, Split Lake now became very interesting that we have our Zarn Lake uh, position, which is outlined in, in kind of the purple there. Um, the uh, zone number three, uh, again, very interesting. And there's a, a fun story about you know, the me being, you know, in the bush with some kind of food poisoning trek, trekking through. Uh, I think I got a, a good field technician experience there. So that was a lot of fun. But we kind of went up to this this one area and, you know, you see the, the old discarded core. We actually identified a, a trench that had some overburden. And then we found, you know, some historical paperwork that, you know, says that, you know, some, some drill holes. Uh, through there with some with some good copper hits as well. So 
you know, just kind of, it's interesting and, and, and totally different when you kind of see it on paper and you've been researching it and you, you actually go there and, and, and you know, get, get after it and kind of pull, pull the overburden away. It's, it kind of brings a new light to it. Um, and then the fourth, fourth zone, the, uh, the West zone, you know, basically, uh, you know, a lot of high grade hits there. We didn't end up making it over there, but this is the part that's adjacent um, to uh, treasury metals. So very exciting. Um, notable kind of major gold districts that this is showing early signs of are indicated below here. So, you know, Hemlo, Kirkland Lake, and Timmins for the major gold mining districts. Um, you have some base metal and there's some nickel as well. So, um, okay, moving on. Now I'll kind of, um, so just jumping into to the, the first zone here, I'll probably pass it over to Mitch so we can kind of walk through um, our, uh, our approach on our, on our program here. Um, but basically what we have is we've kind of been through all of these uh, sites all the way to the portion of the Moretti. We have high grade hits kind of all over the place. There's narrow high grade veins throughout this property. And I'll kind of pass it over to Mitch to kind of, um, you know, give an overview of, of our approach to, to this area. Okay. Well, I guess the easiest way to, to, uh, to explain our property is, uh, <clears throat> We have a uh, sequence of Archean volcanic and intrusive rocks that are uh, faulted and contain uh, at least three major shear zones. And along these structural shear zones, we have the, uh, the showings. So as, as uh, Peter indicated, the Moretti is the one that's been worked on the most that they've taken bulk samples out of. And, got extremely good uh, results from. Uh, the other uh, showings have been sampled, uh, but not a lot of work has been done on them other than a couple of drill holes. And <clears throat> these were done, I think the last drilling here before Group 10 uh, acquired this property was back in the 80s. So what this was, as Peter indicated, a bunch of uh, different properties with a bunch of different operators and they went in and they did their thing and they drilled some holes. Gold was anywhere <clears throat> from, uh, you know, 150 to $400 an ounce. If they didn't get uh, half an ounce intersections, uh, they walked away. So we have, we have kind of all the different pieces that fit into the puzzle. We're just, uh, our job is going to be to figure out which piece goes in and which, uh, which hole in the puzzle yeah okay perfect thanks so much mitch um i just wanted to point out also i don't know if uh, i don't think we, we touched on it but there was a kind of you know holy cow moment when we were on here um correct me if i'm wrong mitch i do i, I do have a picture of you kind of running over in the in the appendix but i believe that was the drag fold area and that kind of had a bit of uh some copper as well and that kind of wasn't really discussed either in the in the uh, in the previous previous kind of workings, could we touch a bit on on that? Yeah, the the drag fold, Peter or Peter's uh, P Peter's right. I got a a little bit excited because when I see a gossin that that's like thirty meters long and fifteen to twenty meters wide, and nobody's talked about it, uh, any of the literature I've read, nobody refers to it. Um, it's in the right kind of rocks. There there's rhyolites. Uh, very close by, and there's again there's the the uh, the intrusive activity around that that makes it very very uh, likely that there's some kind of a VMS uh, system at work there. So I, I get, and I mean I was I was brought up on VMS deposits, so uh, I get excited when I see them. Yeah, it was it was. Uh... Fantastic experience being being right there and, and catching on camera too. So well, I think I did. You're running over. I don't know. Um, okay. So this is so then we have a we have a graphic here. So this is the uh, eight eight thousand kilogram yeah eight thousand kilogram uh, ton sample at fourteen. So as you can see, it's dated. Um, you know, kind of a lot, lot of overburden grown in. So not a lot of work done. There was a, a hole underneath it, uh, half a meter at, at fifteen grams, if I'm not mistaken. So kind of further kind of substantiates you know the extension there. Um, which, which is exciting and, and proves, you know, we're going to definitely have a follow-up here. Again, this is all kind of along the ATV trail as well, so really easy to get to. Um, this, is, this became a very interesting 
area. So this is the, the middle portion. Um, now that we've acquired the Alcona Mine or Zarn Lake uh, portion, there's there is just a lot of consistent kind of high grade, narrow, narrow veined all over the place, never been really tested in aggregate um, from a low grade high tonnage. Um, there's actually an old shaft, which there's not a lot of documentation on for the in the split lake. It's a bit um, discolored there, but you know there's a, a public showing we've been there, and that was again another moment where kind of Mitch looked at it and said, you know, this this could be really interesting. So there's kind of really interesting spots throughout this that you know are, are showing a great sign from an from an exploration project, um, but all kind of you know we'll move on, and there's the, there's a consistent theme of, of high grade narrow hits in addition to, um, to to copper as well throughout. Um, this again, this is a, an exciting graphic that was sent over by uh, the Reeves. So this is um, from one of their trenches, you know, 21 grams, um, 21 grams gold, 184 grams silver, 3.4% copper. Um, very interesting. And then, so that's on the left. And then on the right is, is the blast rock from the split lake um, area as well. And I believe if, if I'm, uh, Mitch, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure there was, you know, three grams kind of, there's um, documentation where, you know, three grams are kind of lying around. Yeah. Um, so, you know, very interesting throughout the project um, property. Very, very interesting. Um, you know, we got a bit of a story here, so this is fun. But so again, so zone number three, uh, the Shaft Lake zone kind of split into two areas, right where the star is there, number three, that's there's another shaft. So there was two shafts there. One we saw, one, it was getting a bit dark. You know, there was a bear, bear bait barrel and it was, it's archer season. So I got a bit spooked and said, you know what, Mitch, I think we're going to pack it in on this one. So, but, you know, shafts, high grade hits, very interesting area to follow up. Um, also the Macombre, um, we took a, took a small boat to get out there uh, from, a, from some uh, friendly locals. And basically what we discovered is you kind of roll up and you see the discarded core everywhere, which is, you know, really interesting. And then you uh, climb up and we kind of found, found the area where, you know, Mitch said, you know, if this is a trench, you know, this is, this is, this would be the area. This definitely looks like it. a lot of overburden. So I said, you know, give me the, give me the pickaxe. And, and we kind of uncovered some overburden and then you see a channel sample um, right there. Really interesting. And that's on the next, uh, next slide. And then on, on top of that, you have a drill hole going through, kind of furthering it a little bit from surface, which is which is it's just a very interesting area that we're definitely going to be following up um, once you secure the financing. And then to touch on the west zone a little bit, um, there's there's surface samples, you know, in the ounces, and we had to convert it down, obviously. But you know, you have 150 grams per ton assay and grab samples, consistent over the four showings. So very interested to to go over and and have a look. Um, and again, this is this is the this is the, the uncovered uh, trench area with the channel, and there's a deep discarded core on the left. And then for some context, um, you know, you have some reasonable gold hits from surface. Uh, in addition to copper from trench two, there's two trenches there that we've uh, both identified, and that's in the appendix and also on, available online um, to view. So moving on, this this is just um, you know we were there. We you know wanted to show everyone. Um, what, you know, the path is to get to the targets and, and kind of what's there. And this is actually, I didn't touch on the, the work that we have scheduled coming up. So starting from the left, going over to the right. So that's your paved highway going through the, the property. Well-maintained logging roads, two active logging companies that are working the area. So kind of all weather roads, very well-maintained. Um, just to skip to the far right, there's your ATV trails. I did send some graphics over to Red Cloud as they're managing our, our marketing. So there, there is... Um, potentially some pictures of, uh, of me with uh, clearing out the ATV roads um, and Mitch as well, uh, mostly Mitch, but that's, that's okay. Um, and then in the, in the, so then, then you have um, second from the right is uh, the power line. So that's, you know, a testament to like the infrastructure that's going in. An important note is that it's, it hasn't been installed fully yet. And we've actually scheduled Airborne EM and MAG to fly um, kind of as soon as possible, we've signed that signed the contract. We're expecting um, end of March for for the uh, Drayton Black Lake project, um, and that's you know we put an emphasis on that, and you know we're willing to kind of cut the check because once you put up the infrastructure, it actually distorts um, kind of distorts the reading. So we want to get that data in there, also get the digitized um, up in three D the current you know drill 
drilling information and layer both together um, to do some systematic kind of exploration, which is which is what we're all about. So we're very excited and we're, we're already moving forward. Um, so, you know, it's a, yeah, it's very, very exciting time. Um, overall, this budget, you know, Ontario is very expensive. Um, and what, what the point of this is, is that, you know, we, we have a plan, we're currently executing on it and we're moving forward and, you know, we're looking for some financing to, you know, further along the, the project, of course, but it, Ontario is expensive um, and we've basically already started. So, you know, our database consolidation, it, it was complete. Now it's near complete because we had to, we did a consolidation with, uh, with the Zarn Lake. So that's kind of, we need that data to properly uh, systematically develop targets. Um, Airborne EM and MEG is scheduled for uh, Q1, um, and then we're kind of planning. And we're, we're just to just to you know give everybody some light. You know we're we're already talking to contractors for for ground crew and and scheduling drilling. So we're really kind of moving fast um, and uh, to advance advance this property. So and that's kind of that's kind of the company style. Um, is there anything else you want to touch on here, Mitch, or can we move on? No, I think I think that that covers it uh, pretty much. Okay, great. Um, an important, a, a very important slide. Um, so basically, this is this is an aggregation of the uh, Drayton Black Lake um, two option agreements. So with Group Ten Metals and with um, the Reeves, Paul Reeves. So overall, inexpensive. So you know, four 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 hundred forty thousand in total payments. Um, a decent amount of shares. Which is you know fantastic to have um, them as part of the shareholder group. Um, project spend five million, you know, fourteen thousand two hundred twenty nine hectares, uh, five million dollars minimum spend to advance. Pretty easy target to hit um, with that size of a property. So reasonable, but keep keeps us honest and keeps us accountable, which um, we appreciate. Um, the important point. So the option agreement. So for the Reeves, it's one hundred percent in after three. And then with the group 10, there is it's um, earn in fully to 90. Now, just to point out to everyone listening, there is a pathway to get to 100%. So that's on the presentation of a feasibility study. Um, you get we, group 10 has the option to either take a royalty, which we've um, agreed upon, a royalty agreement, um, which is 2% on unencumbered and 1% on current encumbered royalties, um, or they participate and then that gives us 100% or they give us, um, you know, kind of JV into, into a 90-10, um, which is very exciting. There's also some notable kind of performance bonuses here. Um, it's kind of a running running uh, a joke with them. You know, like there's a they get a dollar per ounce of anything that we put on the resource and reserve category. You know, I, I really can't wait to cut. I don't think anybody on our team can cannot wait to cut Group 10 a, uh, a check or, or shares at uh, – a cap of 10 million. So if we find, you know, 10 million ounces here, that'd, that'd be great. So uh, I don't think we'll have a problem paying the dollar per ounce. Um, and then we've kind of already discussed most of the uh, most of the other terms here. And that's for your reference and also available uh, online. Um, another project that I'll, I'll touch on briefly here is uh, our Contact Bay um, project, which is kind of an aggregation of there's two public companies and, and a few privates um, showing similar indications of uh, you know, narrow high grade hits, and then also some copper, nickel, platinum, palladium on there as well to the southwest. Um, yeah, and notably, our kind of our neighbor to the north is, is KG Exploration, a subsidiary of Kinross. Um, there, that's an active active mining um, or exploration uh, package up there. So they, and then we've developed kind of three targets, and we're also flying that with EM and Mag as well. Same company, um, same area. Might as well get it all get it all done at once. And then we'll kind of, again, do a systematic drill program with the current data that is available. And um, once we get in the, uh, the results, similar region, it's just uh, nine miles south of Dryden, Ontario. Again, we went there by boat. Uh, funny story is we, we went there by boat and then it turns out, you know, after you hike uphill, um, well, probably by zigzag and about, about a kilometer, um, you know, it's quite hot. And then you you can hear the logging roads. So that was pretty funny. But anyway, so just to give some color on uh, on kind of the, the things that you go through on a on a due, due diligence visit. Um, yeah, so moving on. Actually, Mitch, do you want to do you want to take over on this slide and maybe just kind of walk them through, you know, what you think might be here, our plan um, building on the EM and MAG and, and your thoughts, and then we can jump into the capital structure that raise. Sure. The the uh, the contact bay project is basically got as Peter indicated, uh, 
two potential types of, of uh, deposits. One, which is mostly to the, the north part of the, the, the property uh, of uh, orogenic load gold. Uh, we have indications from previous work that there's, again, a bunch of these narrow high grade uh, veins carrying some fairly significant uh, gold content to them. We're going to uh, take a look at them uh, after the uh, airborne is completed. Of course, we're going to look at the mag and see if we can identify <clears throat> some major structures that we can zero in on and, and, and explore. And I'm, I'm pretty confident we're going to come up with uh, some really interesting areas where there's gold mineralization and uh, we can we will end up doing uh, a fairly substantial amount of drilling here now as peter indicated to the southwest there's a uh, as much as the the uh, map indicates kind of a linear uh gabbro the, the the blue it's more of a circular uh shape with uh, numerous showings of copper nickel platinum palladium and uh with with the uh, electric vehicle craze going on, uh, we're going to take a real good, long, hard look at, at uh, this area for copper, nickel, uh, platinum, palladium. Okay, perfect. Thanks so much for that rundown. Um, we'll jump into the team um, kind of uh, briefly so we can get to some questions. I'm sure you're all dying to ask, ask us some questions. Um, just some, some, some few notes. So on the left, we have kind of our seasoned well, left and bottom with Mitch included, uh, more of our director, directors and CFO. So Patrick Moen and, and James Fairburn um, or Jim Fairburn, both uh, directors on Trelawney. So they have the kind of the big finance experience um, that kind of adds to it. And, and they can kind of walk us through and, and guide us through the, the, the kind of pathway to, to get to get um, to that level. Um, and they kind of, you know, bring that bring that level of intensity to the to the team, which is very, very appreciated. Um, Ray Carvelis. You know, d director and CEO of DRA Global, uh, that grew to 44,500 4, um, employees. Um, you know, Mind Consulting, uh, we met through uh, relationships uh, from uh, previous uh, Step Gold, uh, previous company I was associated with. Um, you know, great, great group, really adds to that lens of let's systematically uh, build something. So very excited to have him on the team. Uh, Patrick Sullivan, um, you know, Lawyer, most notable kind of uh, current topical uh, experience now, I think, is uh, the pending uh, transaction with Great Bear and, and Kinross. So uh, Patrick is representing Kinross on that front, which is exciting. Um, and myself, I'm you know hold the chartered accountant and chartered financial um, analyst designation. Uh, I hold I've, I hold a, I'm a director of Pacific Empire and have some previous uh, public company experience, notably interim CFO of Ion Energy. Um, and I'll let uh, maybe Mitch run down a bit of his history. Sure. I, uh, I graduated from the University of Western Ontario, went to work for uh, Con West. Uh, we came up with some stuff. Uh, actually, uh, I, I don't mean to, I don't mean to uh, brag, but uh, I made Con West over a million dollars one day by finding the, uh, the mistake that Kid Creek made. Uh, north of the uh, of the mine on a, on a property, I found out that there was a, a surveying error, and the deal went from a hundred and fifty thousand dollar deal to a two million dollar deal. From uh, <clears throat> from working at Conwest, I went with Getty Mines out to Saskatchewan looking for uranium. Found a couple of uranium deposits out there. And then I turned around and came back to Timmins, worked for AMAX and was involved. It was my crew uh, that found the north zone of Bell Creek. From, uh, and of course, that's when AMAX got into all kinds of problems and, and Canamax was formed, but I was gone by that point. And I went to Val d'Or uh, with a gentleman called Murray Pollitt and, and we ran Western Quebec uh, and came up with the uh, Juby Gold Mine put that in production, ran it for a little while, and then I went off my own until 2008, I think it was, when uh, I brought the Quebec Lithium property and Canada Lithium acquired it, and 
we took that into production. I delivered the deposit I said I would deliver and the engineers kind of screwed up on that. And uh, it's people are still trying to put it into production today. So I've been around the block a few times and uh, I don't know everything, but I know a lot. All right, thanks so thanks thanks so much, Mitch. Um, okay, um, we also have a, a wonderful uh, external strategic advisory uh, group. Um, everybody ha has full time commitments elsewhere. Um, notably, the top two, Jeremy and Dave Fro Jeremy Oakelson and Dave Frost. So these are kind of mind mind builders, mind mind consultants. Um, definitely a, a great resource to kind of tap on the shoulder periodically and say, you know, what do you think about this? What's the path? path you know is this going to be a mine they kind of they really add add a significant amount of value there along with Ronaldo Stefan I can kind of draw on him and his and his group if we need to really crank out some detailed analysis he does a fantastic and has done a fantastic job when we are looking at um, other projects um, Alex Pern and Peter Burez kind of bring everything together they have um, that you know again full-time commitments but you know you have the best of both worlds you really you have some that that on the ground technical experience but also capital markets so they kind of come in and, and bring it all together and i kind of bounce ideas on you know how, how things will trade and how that will work so it's great to have them as as a you know a a, a light resource <clears throat> sorry resource when uh when needed rick horn um in the bottom right so our economic geologist he was our boots on the ground and, and one of the reasons why we developed and ended up dropping the uh, the Harrigan Cove uh, project that we previously held an option on, um, especially during COVID times. It's fantastic to have relationships that you know are kind of on site. I mean, I think he was a couple hours away from from the site, so you know, really quick and, and available. And if we're looking at anything out there, Rickhorn's kind of our our first call. So it's great to have the external strategic advisors um, still with us and and still helping. Um, you know, I talk to these guys every every couple weeks or so. Uh, moving on, so company snapshot, we got a tight retail, um, tight retail holding about 58%, uh, most of it's friends and family, uh, management consultants, everybody cuts has cut a check um, every round, which it, uh, from a management and uh, director standpoint, so it's great to have that continued faith in, in each round, and institutional um, holdings are, are 10 point fund and uh, core capital. So that's uh, it's great to have some kind of loyal institutional investors that again have kind of cut checks in uh, in every round, um, with the exception of of um, the founder round. I don't think Ten Point was in there, um, but you know there's um, you know it's, it's great to have kind of a loyal loyal institutional holdings. Um, again, this is we can kind of go through this if anybody has questions, but kind of just put it out there. This is on the website if you want to see the, the different rounds and when they were done. Reasonable capital structure, very tight at eighteen. 0.2 million before um, share issuances. So that's fantastic. And then we have our, you know, again, just putting it out there. We're a private company. We don't have to do this, but we are. There's our use of proceeds to date and kind of where we've where we spent our money, um, which is, you know, I think uh, we've done a great job and, and can run a really tight ship. Um, this is a bit about our brokered raise. You know, we can take up to 10 million. I think it's important to put a cap on there. Um, specifically 7.5 million in uh, flow through that we're willing to kind of take on because we've got to be kind of protect the shareholders and make sure we can we can uh, deploy that capital in, in an efficient manner. Um, there's a use of funds um, over here. Again, this is this um, is, is, is totally subject to change once we get out there and uh, and file the preliminary. Um, so I'll, we'll probably skip over this, um, you know, and then we also kind of uh, laid out the kind of basic um, after then we have a project acquisition line so shares that are issued after after we're public uh, max um, IPO p potential again nothing nothing solidified there and then you give uh, kind of basic basic and and um, and fully diluted um, on a post deal basis um, another important note here so we've kind of done our comparable comparable analysis um, you know for the projects that have uh, leading exploration um, projects in Ontario. Um, it's about 40, I think it says 44, I probably killed a few um, uh, recently, but you know, there's there's about 40, 40 companies. Uh, we got a top tier land position. We have a top tier or mid tier cast position and that's relative to public companies. We are private. And then, you know, we also have uh, a top tier kind of share structure and shares outstanding. So we're very excited to kind of bring everybody along to kind of the next step and uh, excited to go public. I believe that is 
all for now. I'll leave it over to Taylor for some uh, questions. Perfect. So thanks a lot, Peter and Mitch. Uh, so now we'll turn to the Q&A portion of the webinar. And just a reminder to everybody on the line that you can type in your questions uh, into the chat box at any time. Uh, so we've had some come in already. Um, so I'll just kind of start going through them here. Um, first one's a bit more of a, a comment uh, saying you should try to increase the exploration budget to about 40 million Canadian, just like a tech of minerals. Uh, you know, I think that comment kind of speaks to the, the scale of the, the opportunity here and, and kind of what you've outlined in that presentation. So it's uh, more of a comment, not really a question, but uh, Noted. I don't know, yeah, I don't know if you have anything to in response to that or add to that or. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, Ontario is expensive, so you know we'll kind of see see how see how the markets are, and you know, 40, 40 million is a lot. Um, I think that would push out the share share count quite a bit, and we'd be able to advance it. But I think uh, I think I'll have to talk to the bankers about that one. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Okay, um, next one up. Uh, what approach will you be taking with your additional land package involving Group Town? Addition. What yeah. approach? Yeah, what approach? So from a technical standpoint, Mitch, do you want to take that one? I guess that's systematic exploration and yeah, we, we yeah sure. Uh, it'll be the it'll be the same as the rest of the property. Our plan is to to fly the whole property with EM and MAG, analyze it to see what kind of features we can see, uh, go in, prospect, uh, do more than likely some uh, mag and vlf on some of these things if, if we find some areas where uh, we see more uh, sulfide mineralization than normal we may do some uh, areas with ip induced polarization to uh, give us targets and and during this whole time we'll have a couple of prospectors on the ground uh, digging digging moss off the rocks and, and seeing if they can find new stuff for us when that whole thing is almost completed, uh, we will decide where we want to do our, our prioritize our, our drill targets and where we want to start the, the drilling program. Okay. And I think uh, our, for the first year, because everything is kind of weighted uh, forward with the prepare, preparatory work with the, the geophysics and, and prospecting, uh, we have about 1500 to 2000 meters of drilling plan okay perfect um next question um are there any land ownership issues such as first nations land rights and if so what steps are being taken to address those potential hurdles yeah so from the first nations uh perspective there has been an established line of communication with group 10 um, and the First Nations, they are 100% owners. Uh, same with um, Paul, Paul Reeves. Um, and then we're kind of going through the motions on um, when to reach out and at the appropriate time. So we're kind of forwarding that along. Um, I don't know if Mitch, you wanna comment on that specifically, but I think we're, we've got a good handle on, on the relationships. And yeah, we, we, we were preparing to, to, uh, to start the process. Uh, the the uh, Lac Sewell First Nation uh, just just to the west of uh, Sioux Lookout have a process set up so we we can fit into that process they they already have an understanding with Group 10 so we'll just kind of move in there and and replace Group 10 as as the uh, the face of the project uh, down Contact Bay that's the Wabagoon First Nation and uh, we will be contacting them and sitting down with them both these the, these uh these groups we will have face-to-face -face meetings and uh make sure they understand that uh we're not carpet baggers to come in and and create havoc in in their territory we're we're there to uh to do a job and and to uh get along with everybody and hopefully to uh enhance their life perfect um just probably some clarification here just a, a question on uh, on listing um you know do you plan to be listed and when yeah great question so we've recently closed a financing uh december 31st and then kind of midway through january on flow through and common respectively um we've also kind of put our kind of 
money where our mouth is or sub sub documents where our mouth is, I guess. And so we've actually put in a, a bonus warrant of whoever came in um, on those rounds that, you know, we'll be trading before June 30th, 2022. So our goal and what we're pushing towards at the latest is uh, June 30th, 2022. So that's kind of the worst case in, in our current environment right now. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, turning to kind of back to the, the on the exploration side, you know, you went over the in the presentation lots of you know historical sampling results, trenching, um, you know, etc. Uh, was there any uh, historical metallurgical work done on the property? There was there was no uh, no uh, historic metallurgical work because all of this work was uh, essentially greenfields exploration. Uh, there's uh, other than the, the uh, Moretti zone where the bulk sample was taken, um, it's been drill holes, and, and that's about as far as it got. Okay, great. Um, so I, I guess with this, then, is, is, is are there any, um, you know, his, or any plans of the 43101 uh, report on the project forthcoming? Yes, so as part of the preliminary. Um, prospectus filing, there is, there will be a 43101 filed. Um, it's being finalized now um, and will be kind of signed off, you know, shortly and will be filed like when, when required. Um, so yeah, this is our main project. Mm -hmm. We'll be coming out with a 43101 as soon as possible. I've had, I've gone through many iterations. So <laughs> yes. Perfect. Okay, um, we have a, another question here, just wondering about the, the deck uh, that you used during the presentation. I assume that'll be available uh, on your website. Yes, should be right now. And if it's not, it will be up shortly. Okay, and uh, information, uh, contact information would be in the deck or, or on the website as well, I assume. Yes, right. yeah, feel free to uh, reach out directly. It's not a problem. And even on any of the social media platforms, I mean, they go right to me as well. So um, pretty active. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, um, so I guess looking forward in, 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 into 2022, maybe just um, outline kind of what the key catalysts are uh, as we move through this year and kind of the, the timeline for them. Yeah, sure. So as, a, as we've stated, you know, we wanna be public before um, June 30th, 2022. We're doing a groundwork in, in Q1, uh, Q2, Q3 will be, sorry, uh, Q1 is Airborne EM and MAG, Q2 and Q3 is uh, groundwork and, and target development. So that would be our key catalyst. Um, and then incorporating everything into a systematic drill program, best case scenario, also dependent on financing um, with our with our broker IPO. Uh, Q4 would be the best case for, for, for a drill program. So I'll kind of lay out the rest of the 2022. Excellent. Okay. And um, I think, you know, we've gone through all the questions that have come in, I think, um, you know, maybe I'll, I'll leave it uh, to you if you have any kind of last words or final pitch for investors that you, you want to end on. Well, yeah, sure. Thank, thanks for everybody. Uh, thanks for listening. I know we have some current current shareholders and, and uh, or sorry, current stakeholders and, and potentially future, future interests. So, you know, feel free to, to reach out to me directly. I'm happy to Happy to jump on the phone and, and have a chat or, or a quick meeting. Um, I'm based in Toronto, so if you want to meet up in, in person, happy to do so. Um, we got we got a great story here. Um, there hasn't been a lot of uh, advancement done for this on this in uh, you know in, in ten to fifteen years, really. Um, so we're the first ones to look at it uh, on an aggregated basis. So we're very excited about it. Perfect. So with that, uh, I'd like to thank uh, both Peter and Mitch from Heritage Mining for taking the time today to host this webinar with Red Cloud Securities. And thank you to everybody on the line for tuning in with us. Thanks. Thank you.